This meeting is being recorded. So today is the moon. Very cool. Sanyana's idea. We have a plate, something ground, whatever. Yeah, so our first step, we're planning where our moon is going to be. So let's say you have smaller circle. Maybe it's also somewhere at the corner of the page and you have more space around. If it's very big, like this, maybe it's in the middle. Aha, uh -huh, someone else is joining. Good, good, good. Beef. Hello, hello. Yeah, we're just starting, just starting. We are getting something round to have our moon painted. Yes, and then we choose which size and which position our moon is on the page. Yeah. So I will continue a bit like here, moon in the middle, and then maybe I will do those, um, like here on the picture I found such a colorful lines around in the sky, yeah? So this, this drawing is it's just a black paper with um, colorful pencils, yeah? But today, of course, we're doing paints on white paper, so let's just start. Yeah, Juliet and Ellie are already waiting in patience. So just with a pencil, made a circle. Okay, you probably don't see it. Let me do it again. Yes. So of course you can do your paper pencil more softly. I will try to press more harder. Here we go. Nice. Yeah. So the first, the first start just to define where your moon is, how big it is, and where your moon is living on the paper. Yeah. And then we have, so you can see this drawing here I have also on the phone. This is one of the views, of course, the moon can be different, but let's hi. say, oh, hi, 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 good to see you, good to see you, yes, join in, welcome, welcome to the group, yes, so today we have the moon painting, um, I will be using gouache, um, it's basically almost the same as acrylics, yes, yeah, so acrylics, gouache, whatever is more comfortable. So here I have also the, the cup with the, with the water and, and my palette to mix. Yes. And, yeah, but as usually we start with, um, uh, with a pencil drawing, yeah, and then we continue with the paint. So everyone has its circle. Juliet Ellie, thumbs up if you have your circle ready. Yeah, Sanyana. Ah, Sanyana is already done. Very good. Okay. So it's Siba, Chiba. Yeah, uh, what is the correct? Um, how should I correctly spell your name? Wait. Um, Siba. Siba. Very nice. Thank you, Siba. So Siba is ready. Girls, Juliet, Ellie, uh, as well you have. And then we can just play around like creating all these spots of the moon. Yes, of course we, we see here it's a big, like very bright circle. We can start with it. So it's some kind of so I will be pressing my pencil very hard so you can see it. But you feel free to go softer on your pencil. Yes. So let's see here are some. And then lots of stars. Yes, yeah, so what we do now, we are planning. We're planning which... Um, yeah, all, all those parts of the moon that, that we can see. Yes. 
So the big bright one here, like the other one is here at the bottom. Let's say it's, it's the same, the same thing, but as we see it on the border, we actually need to draw it a bit like squeezed because this will help us show that our moon is has volume, yeah, that it's not flat. I mean, our paper is flat, it's 2D, but we will be trying to show that our moon is 3D. So this is a little bit the trick, yes, that we show also the circle, but it's squeezed like almost in oval, smaller, so. And then, so you can follow the ones are here on the picture. Feel free to invent also your ones, yeah? What spots, what um, emptinesses, whitenesses has the moon? Yeah, you can see they're very, all very different. And yeah, so now sketching, planning. The story of, yeah, again, I'll try, I forget, but I'll try to draw with the stronger. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you can plan the, the separate lines and then also, um, kind of more foggy areas. Yeah, you can see there are like um, some bright spots and the rest is more like blurred grayish. Yeah, like no, what you have to think here is like what kind of border it has. Yeah, does it have like very strict, very defined border or is it more like blurred? border yes yeah and no worries if you don't sketch them all now it's more like defining the main shape. So what we can also see from this picture on my phone, yes, that so the upper part is more like gray, grayish, and the bottom it has even more this grayish part. The middle is more black. This all help us to be um, to show that it's not flat; that it's it's circular. Hmm. And more or less that's it. So our sketch is not that complicated. Yeah, we kind of plan the main areas and yeah, and then we can continue with our with our paints. Yeah, but take your time, no rush, there is no rush. And um Finish your <coughs> so what kind of brushes I have. So when I work with gouache or acrylics, I like to have like flat end brushes. Yeah. So let's say if it would be watercolors, then of course I you like those yeah, more more shapey uh, brushes. Um, and today, of course, mainly black and white, of course. And it's always more difficult to work with less colors. Yeah. So it's actually in the start, it's also always advisable to limit your palette and try to work with uh, little paint, little colors. Yeah, not uh, all the box. And 
Yeah, and today's special with the moon, so we got we need to create, let's say. Already now you can think, okay, which areas will be white, bright white, so they shine. Which areas will be gray? And then we can have dark gray and light gray. And then we can have black. Yeah, so we will need to work on the on the gradation. So and then you can also explore mixing how much white you need and how much black you need yes of course you need much more white to mix um, what you need yeah then i also use paper towels always very useful let's say to wipe some extra paints we shall I show you my sketch? Yeah, of course, Anyana. Let me see. Let me see. It's a little hard. Oh, one second. <laughs> Maybe you can just uh, lift up your or you. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Siva is showing. Yeah. Oh, very nice. I love that it's big. I love it that's on, on the whole page. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. And you have you have the main the main areas. Yeah, we're ready, ready to start with paint. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. Yeah. So what we shall do with our palette, okay. and let's say you have white, like I take, I can just place a big pile of white. I mean, like not huge one, but moderate, but um, maybe even you can have like, I'll have a big one here, a smaller, because what my aim is now is to have different gradations i want to have uh, yeah as we as we talked dark gray light gray um, the first we're going to start working is light gray yeah this is what what we usually do we start working from light to dark and of course we can't start working with white because our paper is white and it will be maybe yeah, a bit. So we will cover firstly with light gray, let it dry. And then we, some areas we do darker. And then in some areas we can put pure white accents. Yeah, so. And adding black to, to white, look, very little bit. I have barely touched my brush, very, tiny, tiny bit of black. And I go slowly mixing into my white. I already feel that's gonna to be too much. It's gonna to be too much. I wash my brush. So it's always better to go slowly and go several times rather than you put lots of black and it's too black and you try put in white again and it's not working and you're wasting your paint and your time. So always with a tiny bit better going several times. Yes, and let's say here I have mixed one gray. And if I want a different one, I mix in it, but not in the middle. I mix like on the side. And here at once I already have, let's say, very, very light pale gray. This is actually what I'm looking for now like very pale gray. Yeah, and I will change my brush. I'll take a bigger, a bit bigger brush. Yeah, because what we need now, we need kind of the base layer. And what it's also good in this very pale gray, it is half transparent. So it doesn't really cover my pencil. Yeah? So I'm putting it 
and I can still see my sketch. Yeah. And then of course, I'm, I'm checking with, with, my, with the image. Yeah, so I'm not putting it everywhere. I put it, let's say, where, where uh, all these gray areas are going. But of course, I'm more relaxed because this light gray, I can easily cover um, with any other darker, with darker gray, with black. And also, when it's dry, I can recover it with white. Yeah. Then all you need to know is just putting like more brave layer of white and you can have it um, yeah so here I've played also don't worry if let's say you get out a bit out of the circle it's actually good because since we have used the plate we have used the plate to to draw the circle it's too perfect yes and actually the moon it's it's not really flat, it has all its um, factor. So um, it's very good if your circle becomes a little bit uneven. Yeah. So here my... Yeah, so as usual, we start with the base, base. <laughs> if somewhere you're getting like very strict borders, feel free also to fade it out with, with a bit more water. Very cool. So what would I do next? So the next actually, since I already had my like darker gray mix and light gray mix, then I will just use also this dark gray mix. It's like, let's say the second level, yes? And I can go a bit, a bit around and make some parts darker, yes? So maybe these are some, some lines or maybe some areas as well, yeah, so, so you can be checking with, with, with the picture, but I can also can go just by the feeling. So we're already just making some differences. Yes, and always feel free to blend it out. And to blend it out, then you just, for example, I've put some paint and it feels too dark. And what I do, I just tap and put my brush into the water. And then um, clean it up a bit. And then with a the clean brush, just uh, kind of extend the paint that I have on the paper. Yeah, and as you see, I'm really coming out of the borders of my, of my moon, no worries. Yeah. So on purpose, making it a bit uneven. And yeah, it looks more, more realistic, more fun. So for example, looking at the different images of the moon in infrared, what I have found out that on the drawing, it looks very nice when it has kind of very wide border all around um, 
the moon, yeah, the drawing. So mm -hmm. it's again, uh huh. Can I use the tissue and dab it a little on the gray? Yes, of course, of course, Anyana. You already, you're not the first time you already experienced, of course, the paper uh, towel issue. It's always good to yeah, take out some extras. If it's too much water or if it's too much paint, you put. And it also helps to create nice texture, actually. Yeah, so let's say I put too much paint. The important thing is not moving it, but just tapping. It tapped and lift it up vertically. Yeah, so, and then you'll see it's also, also if you crumble it nicely, yeah, so then it will also, you will get some nice lines some texture. So it's actually also a tool. No? All right, all right. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking. So uh, before we dive in into really black, I would suggest we kind of, we're still in our light grays. We actually take white. So let's say if you're still on your palette, you have a pure white. And I just kind of create so this is what I was I started to talk about this white shining border. Yeah. So I know I told you like painting with white and white paper looks maybe a bit silly, but this is what we do because we're gonna work with black. And this will help us to protect. So I'm putting kind of even a bit thicker layer of white all around uh, the moon. Because later I'll be putting black outside and inside. But then I will try to keep this line. Yeah? And so this is also the trick. By making it now a bit bigger than it has to be. So when later I'll be painting with black around, this, this will help me to save it the line and get it in the, um, in the size I need. Yeah, because of course, always with the brush, we, we touch too much, we cover too much, also depending which, which size of brush we have and the size of drawing. Uh, and here I'm also like, since I, to whiten my brush, I also do just maybe a few spots on the moon itself. Um, but we will be getting back into all this. Yeah, so all we do now, it's still like preparing the base layers. Yeah, so of course we already kind of started a bit layering. Yeah, we had light gray, darker gray. But this is basically how you work. Yeah, you prepare the some base. Uh, yeah, usually pale, usually maybe light parts. And then you start working in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe now on my drawing, it's not really visible this, this white outside border. But once we will start putting black around, and then of course you, it's going to be visible. And this will make, also will help our moon to shine. Yeah, this is actually also the trick with yellow. Yeah, very often. If you paint something, you can do the same with yellow, doing kind of yellow um, border and so. 
All right, and now there is um, the decision you as an artist that you have to make. So let's say this is the picture, it's just the moon. And here is another picture that has all these colorful lines that I've also tried to make here. Yeah, so if you decide you also do these colorful lines, then you need to be careful with the black. Yes, then maybe we do just first some black around it. Yeah, and, and then we move to all these car colorful lines and then we come back with a bit more black on the corners, yeah? Because what happens if you put too much black that depends, yeah? Then putting on top those colorful blues and violets, they will not shine, yeah? They will, they will shine only if they are around um, on white paper. And this makes me think Actually, we shall put them first, and the black we will gonna do like in the end, in the end. Yeah, that's the better idea. So choose your like fun colors. Choose the colors you like. So what colors we have there? We have something like. Yeah, we're gonna come back to the moon more. Yeah, so let's also leave the moon resting, and yeah. So I very like much the the emerald color. The emerald is green mixed with blue. Yes, and of course we can have lighter blue, darker blue, purple. Yes, so also let's say I almost never have my purple ready in the in the tube, and I usually always mix it. So but I like it because then I can get different gradation of my purple. Yeah, so let's try kind of choose some space on your palette and put the colors you like. Yeah, it doesn't have to be all of them. But what I suggest, I suggest have one very light shiny. So let's say I will put the lightest blue I have, and I will put a little, I'll try to mix it somewhere here. So I'll put a little pile of light blue here. I will mix it with white. And again, this already too much I've put. I will need much less blue to make it like very, very light blue. And then I'll put also this emerald. Emerald is awesome. Um, one of the favorites Van Gogh colors. Yeah, he used it a lot. Yeah, so maybe I'll put also emerald here. And some pink, of course. So kind of trying to make all this pinky purplish story. Mm. Yeah, so like let's say gouache often comes in, in such of kind of little cans. Then I actually also use just the those tabs themselves. Mm. Evie. Uh-huh. Tell me, Senora. Can I show you one color I made? Ooh, show me. Yes, yes, yes. One second. This color. <gasps> Yay, this is an awesome color. Just like, yeah, don't mix just... it. Save it for, for the paint. Look, it's almost the same. It's very hard to see on the screen. Yeah, the colors change, but it's such a cool. I will also try to mix similar one on I only use ultramarine blue and the normal pink. Yeah. So everyone heard ultramarine and pink 
and then you're getting this very nice yeah so let's everyone try to mix a beautiful purple color because this is what happens that purple sometimes gets mixed beautifully and sometimes it's like yeah too dark or too something and so this is why it's important to know your paints and to know which blue is mixing well with with which red to get a good get a good combination yeah and then you can experiment to have a bit darker purple like towards blue or you can have a bit um i have five colors to use wow awesome awesome I mixed Ooh, now we're gonna one. have fun now we're gonna have fun i still have got the little white put it in. And um, uh -huh. and then I've also almost forgot. So I had my light blue, but what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna prepare also like lighter, yeah, whiter uh, blue. And again, I will need a very tiny bit of blue, like just a tiny touch up of my brush. Yes, and because what we need, we also need for all these colorful colors to shine. So it means some colors needs to be a bit lighter with a bit more white and the rest actually needs to be darker. Yeah, with all these connections. Yeah, so here I got very nice light blue yeah I and, have and i can also experiment the same with emerald and i can use both i can use the original like dark emerald and then i can use the light version yeah i'll experiment what if i will add a little bit yellow to my emerald because when i add white to emerald it makes it pale but if I add a bit of yellow it should make it shine yeah it will make it a bit warmer yes yes yes, yes. that is much better yes because one one has to be careful with white because of course it makes lighter but it makes also more pale yeah? So I'll put the picture here also, so one can. <coughs> and we have those fun stripes. And again, let's start like with the lightest colors we have, yeah? So with the light blue, with this light emerald, with some pinky, and slowly, slowly going the gradation. And the other suggestion, so of course you move a little bit with this direction, like um, like it goes, and then also use the technique of of dry brush. And what it means, I put some paint, and like when the paint is over on my brush, I don't go straight back to fill it up. But I continue a bit scratching with it, so I get those dry brush strokes. Yeah, that someone it's painting somewhere it's not painting, but it let lets me get those like I have more control because I get those strokes. And okay. so I did with one color. Now I can play with the second light color some of those blue and don't don't be scared to put too much of these light colors because the same story the light colors can be covered very easily 
So just put the more and later we'll be putting dark uh, black and dark purple. And yeah, then we will co cover as much as we need those five pieces. Yeah, but the other way it's not working. I can't create more likenesses when I already have cool. Yeah, so I've played my with my emerald. I've played with my light blue. What else? Some light pinky, some light purple also can be. Yeah, so kind of just slowly, slowly. Um, <clears throat> going up the gradation, yeah, and yeah, see also kind of maybe some part will have more um, one color. So do it differently. Don't put it like the same everywhere. So maybe some part shines with my purple. Yeah, and so, and you need to have patience. All our painting will start shining only once we will start putting all the black and dark colors. Yeah, this is the trick with all the with all the things that um, yeah, for light to shine, you need to put something very dark next to it yeah because if i put my sun on light sky it will not be effective yeah but if i put yeah yeah so even my moon is now a bit kind of disappearing very light but just yeah with patience with patience mm -hmm. Okay, so I am already moving slowly to the blacks. And here a bit, so now I've been stroking like very freely, you know, strokes of this, strokes of that, kind of just filling up the space. Now when I move to already dark purple, and next would be also black, I already need to think a bit of creating the shape. So for example, here you can see those lines, they're a bit more like wave. And yeah, so now already putting my dark purple, I need to think already about creating kind of the, the lines, interesting lines. This is also the, so somewhere the lines goes, the curve, goes slower and somewhere the curve goes more um, and more intense like many, many small curves all together then again somewhere the same technique of dry brush strokes yeah but already already thinking about kind of, of shaping, yeah, so, because now already we have kind of the base with light colors is done, and then slowly, slowly, but wor work slowly, so it's very easy to get everything dark, yeah, so don't, don't rush. Purple can also be quite transparent, so use it. Yeah, if you're kind of not sure, yeah, use it more. Because if you use purple more transparent, it will be more uh, light. And it means you are still on the safe side. It means you will still need to work to have those um, contrasts done to make your... Um, 
And also don't forget about this white border we have created around the moon. Yeah, so if you're already getting close to it, keep in mind it's there and that you will need to save it. Huh? Yeah, I hear Sanyana working very actively. Very good. Yeah. And move also around your brush. So sometimes I can use kind of my brush as the border and create like thin strokes. And sometimes I turn it and I use all the flat of my brush. Play with it. Just try to feel how it's responding. Uh, it also responds differently when you have lots of paint on the brush and when you have already almost paint is going out. And so yeah, so in the end learning all the, the technique, yeah, it's just like a bit like the language, you just learn how to use it. And I must say it's not that hard. Yeah, I think creating the ideas, uh, what to paint, yes, it's it's more kind of the task of, of painter. Yeah, but the technique the technique how to do it, I think it's it's kind of almost everyone can learn it. Yeah, if you just practice, get to know your paints, get to know your brushes, experiment with paper, and then you already know. Uh -huh. I do this, the paint becomes this. And then it's already, of course, of how you EP. Uh huh. Tell me, Sonia. What are you doing right now? So I'm still playing with my dark purple. Yes, kind of slowly filling up the space. So even the space where the black will probably go in the future. But some kind of slowly, because in the end, we will need to have kind of really dark painting. It will have lots of black. But the, the story is that we should get to this slowly. So we have all these our beautiful light pink, light blue, light green colors. And then we need to be careful to, to cover them too, too soon. Yeah, so we need them to shine through. But at the same time, the whole image should be, in the end, kind of dark. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How um, are you supposed to mix purple more at the red or more at the blue? Um, it's. I say it's up to up to your feeling. Yeah. So, play maybe with the red, and then move to the purple because purple will cover your red. And but the red, but with red, it'd be harder to cover purple. Uh, so, kind of, you can put more red than you need, and then with your purple, you can recover some areas. Yeah, but let's say I'm very careful, and when I see some very beautiful light areas, let's say here I have very beautiful light pink stroke and now i'm consciously going around it i'm kind of saving it yeah so um not letting it to to disappear yeah this is one also of the golden rules one, once you have some yeah lucky good looking stroke 
just yeah don't do anything more with it keep it yeah? and go work on the other side of painting and And then also what we can do kind of like you've worked on your sky and it's also sometimes good to leave it rest, leave it dry. Yes, and then uh, let's say we come back in a second go. Um, uh, so it's, it's good to jump. It's good because then we get tired working on one corner. So, um, Yes. Yeah, so I'm still careful with all my beautiful greens and blues and everything. Okay. The trick is also sometimes you can be you can apply your paint. Like I can go on top of my blues, but when my brush is a bit like some more watery. So then it's not covering, but it's just kind of creating just some layer on top. And okay, okay, I'm leaving my sky to rest. To rest. Evie. Okay. Uh huh. I am still by the purple. Good, good, good. Yes, I will not go forward. Good, good of telling me, Sanyana. Yeah, this is also a good thing to say to Siva. She's a new one. But if I'm going too quickly, feel free to, to stop me, say, please wait and come. Um, and everyone can talk. Everyone can ask and make comment. Yeah, we're a little group and so it's not only me talking, but everyone can. You know? So for example, now I did kind of very dark um, surroundings and my moon looks very pale. Yes, and so of course the painting is in progress, so that's fine, but just to understand what the things are going on. So this is the tonality, yeah? So when you hear like right or wrong tonality, it means how light and dark. And it's never by itself. It's always in comparison with other stuff on your painting. Yeah? So let's say I could have done the same sky but everything more pale, and then it would look different. Yeah, but now I used like intense, intense purple. So it means I need to make my moon also a bit more intense. Otherwise, the tonalities are not matching. The background is too bright, the moon is too pale, looks, yeah. But of course, I'm very will be very cautious of some white areas of my moon because then they will start shining. And so yes, 
so kind of just take a little breath, take a look at your sky. And um, then we will be coming back to our grayish black. Yeah, so more dark gray and even already some black inside the moon and black also around. But please, very carefully working with black. Yes, black is very tricky color. You can, um, why it's tricky? Because you can easily make your painting dirty, especially when you start mixing it with other colors. Yeah, let's say when I use it pure black somewhere on purpose, it would look nice. But when I start mixing it and moving all around the place, then the thing just looks. That's why it's sometimes even better to use like dark, dark blue, because that dark, dark blue can also sometimes look as black. But then you're more safe of the of the mess. Yeah? But Okay, I'm slowly moving now to dark, dark gray. So not pure black yet, but already, already darker gray and already bravely covering some, some spots inside the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, if you feel, let's say, you're, you're kind of too much of, of dark paint, so what you need to do is you just need to stop. And then you either wipe your brush or you um, clean your brush in, in, in the water and also wipe it. And then... Um, and then you can kind of spread the paint you had and yeah, so I'm also working pretty much gently. I'm already not rushing. Um, um, yeah, using much more dry brush technique. I really like the dry brush technique because it helps me to control yes? and like using those dry brush strokes, I can go over and over at one area and it gets darker slower. If my brush is, is full, then Yes, this, this coloring degradation goes boom and quickly. My spot is dark. And then I have less, less control. And dry brush technique also gives very nice texture. Huh? Yeah, and of course, move your brush a bit around like direction of, of the moon. So a bit those circular movements. Yeah, so it's more like logical to, yeah. And of course I need to wet my brush a bit, otherwise it's, it's not painting at all, yeah, but if I wet my brush, I can also do just do some touch-ups on my paper towel. And um, then the, some excess of water is out. And then I can again have this, this control. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, tell me, Sienna, where are you now? I'm still working with the purple. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I didn't rush you too much. Okay. 
We're almost done. Good purple. What about the rest? See the girls. Oh. Share your emotions. If you want, of course. If you're doing great, that's that's the Rosman Kalila prayer air a bottle on the chin. Air up on the bottles. And again, if there is some like too much water or too much paint, remember of the paper towel that you can do the strokes. Bless you, Sanyana. Staying healthy, it's getting, winter is getting close. Mm -hmm. And then with my moon, of course, I'm playing kind of slowly, slowly getting it also darker. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. did, did you mix a different type of gray? Exactly. So. Yes, I apologize again. I've been, I'm already taking the, the very dark. What I did look, Sanyana, I've played around with the darker gray. Yes, so um, we had already very light gray, kind of medium gray. And then we moved to the sky. And now coming back, we keep on intensifying. Yeah. And yeah, so somewhere I leave white spots, yeah, where I see that where I want it to shine. And somewhere, um, uh, and remember to work with the dry brush technique. Like, and I'll try, we can look, see it very close, yeah, with the dry brush, I get all those cool texture. And at the same time, it helps me to to control how how I intensify my um, the area, yeah. Not too dark with one stroke, but slowly, slowly. And also with this white line around that we've we've left, then also kind of don't. Um, leave it the same thickness everywhere yeah so the same thing i i repeat very often yeah, it should be different it uh, somewhere maybe we even break through the line somewhere it will be no this white border and somewhere it will be very thin and some will be more thick so in those differences the painting starts looking interesting but when it's all the same then then it's boring for for the viewer for the eye yeah so also think on this and this is easy to do like we already have the line just somewhere you kind of cover it a bit more and uh, somewhere you just maybe, hmm?
And for example, what I like a bit more in gouache than acrylics, that gouache can be covered easier a bit. So let's say once my black areas are dry, I'll, it will be easier to cover with, with white or some lighter gray. Yes. In acrylics, I find it a bit more, uh, that's not so easy. Yes. But then again, what acrylics has in favor, with acrylics, you can do the texture, like the, um, like feeling almost like sitting your paint so thick that you think, ah, this is some, some parts of the moon and, huh? and gouache will always stay flat. Gouache will always stay flat in, on your paper. So. I also like very good, I like gouache using in, um, so let's say if you like painting with oil pastels and I like, and we should also experiment one day, then I always use gouache for preparing the, the base to paint because um, then it creates a bit this kind of matte very yeah, that's very nice for oil pastels. So with all the Evie. Uh-huh. Should I show you the picture for now? Yes, me? yes, Sonia, please show it to me how it's working out for now. Uh-huh, uh-huh, not bad at all. You're going very good, yeah? So perfectly, you have your sky. We will come back to sky if it's needed. You have light and gray areas on your moon. And now you just need, so like I'm doing, I'm just one step ahead of yours. And what I do, I'm just putting a bit those black areas. So try kind of also create those. And what I will do, I will move to next step. I will go with the black already also outside the moon. I will go with some black to the sky. Yeah, but also very gentle. Because in the end, of course, we need to integrate. We need to integrate the moon and the sky so they look together. So it's not like two separate parts, like the sky has one color, as one said, the moon is, yeah, they, they need to kind of look together. This is, of course, is very important. And this is why I'm starting now to go with my, like, around. And again, with black, very carefully, yes? Start with those dry brush strokes. Yeah, slowly, slowly, not never rushing with the black. Yeah, and then also from outside, you can a little bit also correct the shape of your moon. Yeah, so also this line. If somewhere it's... Um, And in the end, you'll be surprised, actually, how much we will need to darken the sky for all these colors to start shining. And once feels, ah, uh, it's already covered, colorful, but we'll be going and keep, keep on, keep on slowly darkening till finally we see that some areas are a shining, yes. 
Yes, this is the the thing that Rick you get only with experience. And then how I also work with dry brush. So of course, when I fill up my brush on palette, when I fill up with new amount of paint, yeah, it has lots of paint. So then I go to those areas of my painting that I'm sure it needs lots of black. Yeah, like corners, for example. I'm sure it's gonna be like very dark like there and and then when I feel already my brush is losing amount of paint, then I can go and play a bit around with those kind of lighter, colorful areas that I, I will have. Hmm? So this is a little bit also the... And then, of course, think like darkening, yes? Yeah? So again, maybe not the same in all around the moon. So let's say one area can have more light strokes and um, and then the other area can, can be more darker. So again, not the same, not the same. Yeah? In those differences creates the, the interesting painting yeah, that attracts the viewer. So another thing like what one can remember about comparing gouache and acrylics. But when, with gouache, when they're drying, this is a little bit like tricky. The, the dark colors, like black and dark blue, they become more pale when they dry. And the light colors like yellow and pink, they become more dark. Um, Evie. Mm -hmm. I finished my moon. Ooh, let's all take a look. If Siva, you can show it on the screen. Wow. All right, all right, all right. Nice. I really love you used lots of dark blue instead of black. Yeah. Those. And the moon itself is like very, it looks like so 3D. Wow, fantastic. And I'm also like happy, you know, as an artist, you take decision, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I've, I've, I don't wanna work more, so I might be ruined. It, it really looks cool. All this white border around the moon really gives almost, almost I feel like as if it's coming out of the, out of the page, yay. Not bad at all. There is an artist among us. Huh? Cool. You can tell us, Siva, like, what's your experience, what you like to draw, or um, what's your favorite medium? I don't know. Also, where are you joining from? Because we all join from different parts of the world. London. London, yay. Let's welcome London in our group. So, Sanyana, I know you're in Berlin, Sanyana, aren't you? I'm in Düsseldorf. Ah, Düsseldorf, I apologize. Yes, 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 my bad. But I remember Germany. And then Juliet and Ellie, they're in the States. 
but I will not recall the, the specific location. And and myself, I'm joining from from Riga, from Latvia. Yeah, so cool, London uh, among us. And I'm, thank you. I have to go now. Okay. Okay. See you next time. See you next next bye week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow, it was very nice. Such quick and such a cool drawing. But we continue fighting, girls. We continue fighting for our moon. I still have also stuff to do. Yeah, also feel free, mm -hmm. maybe like what I'm doing now, I'm calming down a bit the Calming down the moon, like this this white circle around the moon uh, that we did. So somewhere maybe it's a bit too bright. And what I think is the most, one of the most difficult parts is, yeah, so this is the, those all those shining elements like we still need to decide what is shining more the moon or the sky so they're not in contradiction one between each other Yes, and don't be scared to get with more black into your colorful stripes because the end think that it has to look more like all together. And so even if you will be covering some of your light color strokes, yes, the main objective is that... TV? Uh-huh. I kind of found that idea I could make. I'm not sure how it looks. Oh. Right here, mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to add. Oh, you disappeared. You're going to add. I'm going to add a little bit of black. Yes, yes. And that's then great. I'm just going to, because I have some colors left. I thought I'm gonna add a little bit of black and try to cover a, a little bit over it so it looks like a little pink shine. Yay, awesome idea, Sanyana, very good. I love 
your decisions. Yeah, you're already thinking like artist. You already know uh -huh, what is useful to me. Right, right. I think I'm slowly, slowly coming to an end of my moon. Will not ruin it more. <laughs> Julie Trelli, how are you doing there? Yeah, thumbs up. Very good. Happy, happy. Go slowly already done or need more? If you're done, can show it. Can show also the. And when you 
let's say more or less done with the moon, you can come back and do maybe some white spots. You remember almost like splashing with the brush, but I think it's better still to, to work just with the brush. Maybe I'm done with the half, the half of the side and we're changing it a little bit of yeah, I see, but looking good from what I see here. Not bad at all. Looks like a real moon. Evie? Uh-huh, tell me. At the end, can I add a little bit of stars very lightly? But of course, of course, Sanyana. But not too much because um, the, moon, the moon is the main part of it. This is the real artist speaking. Yes, yes. It's already knowing and taking these wide decisions. OK. The moon is the main hero. So I will have some, but not too much, not too much. I will, I will also use your idea. I will also maybe set some stars. I will do, I will take off the chain. Uh, this is the favorite. Magic. Is your one done, Evie? I will take off the paint, but I will use also your idea to work a bit more on the stars. But I feel like the, the borders are more or less maybe done. I don't know, maybe a bit more black some part, yeah, but... Did you already do stars a little bit? Yeah, I also did a bit. I liked your idea. So I added a few dots, but I will see if I will use a bit more or not. This is why I want to take off the tape, because of course it, it got too dirty, yes, with all these strokes. So then it will help me see better how my painting looks like almost finished and if I need more of the stars somewhere Right. In the favorite moment. Yeah. Deep a bit. 
Evie, uh -huh. did you do the painting or uh, the other painting what, and what you're not doing now? Mm -hmm. That looks nice. It looks very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. So you see, it's kind of the same drawing, just different techniques. So of course, this one we've painted now with paints. And this is done with the color pencils on a black paper. So all this black is already the paper and I was just doing the also like with white pencil and some silver, some gray pencil. And, and then I've used a little bit of oil pastel of white to set those um, accents, yeah. Okay, now I feel the, the moon needs to be a bit more darker. Somehow I have it too, all too shiny a bit. Uh, I need to a bit calm down a bit. Yeah, so this is the problem with gouache. Gouache is drying and my black is getting more pale. So it's not as dark as it feels at the start when I'm putting it. I think I'm done with my moon. Yay, let's take a look, Ellie. Juliet feels or seems Serious or wow, Ellie was wow, such a cool moon. Love all your sky, very good making it so dark, intense, and the spots on the moon. Yay! Maybe if you want, you can do also some stars on your dark sky, make some little, little white points like stars, maybe if you like it. Yeah, I tried doing that, but the light we have now is more like, I don't know, they became very watery because that's the only way, unless the paint chunks would fall yeah, off. Yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, so just maybe wait till it's dry and then just more like, with not so watery, but just little, yeah, it depends, but oh, awesome. How are you doing, Juliet? How it's working on your moon? Almost done. I'm just adding some blue and pink to the sky. Perfect, perfect. Yay, girls. So our idea has worked well. The moon. Not easy at all, I must suggest. Yeah, so it's not an easy painting. Cool.
All right. Wow. Sanyana's moon also looking awesome. Very shiny, very shiny. This is what I like about all your works. And also Ellie's one looked, yeah, the moon shines. Yeah, and I love you how you keep on working on it, adding a dark, adding dark. So it's, it gives this feeling. All right, I will stop recording here and then we can chat.